In this video, I'm going to go over what I would do if I was starting game development right now. As you may know, I've been making games for over 10 years now, and it has never been easier to get started in game development. These 7 steps will take you from nothing to making a complete published game. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here are the 7 steps that I would do if I was starting my game development journey right now. If you follow this list, then by the end, you will have become a game developer. How much time you can put in is also up to you. If you're super busy with a full-time job and can only dedicate an hour a day to game development, then that's perfectly fine. This is your journey, it's not a race, so do as much as you can. The main thing is to make sure that you do it consistently. Do at least one thing towards your goal every single day. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Here are the 7 steps. Step number one, start off small and spend one to two months making small weekly games. These should be very simple prototypes, essentially focused on a single mechanic. Don't spend too much time thinking up a cool unique idea. The goal with this phase is to get acquainted with the engine and become more familiar with the tools at your disposal. Your main focus should be volume, it's better to make eight simple prototypes than just two really unique ones. Right now you're trying to gain some experience and not build a complete game. Also, make sure you explore various genres, so don't do 8 platformers. Maybe do 1 platformer, 1 top-down shooter, 1 racing game, 1 UI heavy game, and so on. One way you can do is recreate very simple games or mechanics. For example, making Pong is extremely simple and it will teach you about input and physics. Whatever you do, focus on continuous learning. Also, I would encourage you to stick with 2D since it's likely easier to learn unless you have a 3D modeling and texturing background. You can draw a 2D sprite of whatever object you need much faster than you can do a 3D model. And sticking to two dimensions also helps keep complexity down. Step number two, and this one is actually alongside the first step, which is watch basic and intermediate tutorial videos on Unity and C Sharp. Do make sure you watch both Unity specific videos as well as standalone C Sharp videos. There's tons of excellent learning content out there related to C Sharp alone, so in order to learn the language, don't limit yourself to Unity specific videos. Watch basic videos that are right at your skill level, but also make sure you check out some more advanced topics. For example, I have some more complex videos on pathfinding or making a quadrant system. Now, if you started on this journey completely from scratch, then it's perfectly normal if you can't follow 100% of the videos, but even if you don't completely understand it, do make sure you watch more intermediate complex videos. Doing so will expose you to more advanced concepts, which will help you learn faster. Step number three, now it's time to make a complete simple game. Now, when I say complete, what I mean is something that you can play from start to finish and you could technically publish to the App Store or Steam. So that means it has to have a main menu, game start, game loop, and end. It should be as bug-free as possible, and it must have sound effects and some background music. Now, this one should take you about four weeks. Here in this step, you actually have two sub-options. You can recreate a specific game or build something original. Personally, I would suggest you go with recreating a game and then add your own tiny twist. Doing so means you don't spend too much time on design since the design is already set. That means you have more time for what really matters, which is getting more experience working with the engine and building a complete game. There are lots of designs that you can make in this time frame. For example, you can make Snake, Flappy Bird, Space Invaders, Asteroids, Pac-Man, and so on. Like I said, that would be my suggested path, but I understand that it might sound unappealing to make a game that already exists. You probably started game development because you want to make your own games. So if you really want to do something unique, then go for it. However, do be careful with the scale of your design. One extremely important thing you're trying to learn through this phase is how to scope. By this time, you will have completed a bunch of prototypes. So use that knowledge to figure out what you can do inside of this time frame. It should be more complex than a simple prototype like Pong, but naturally it can be as complex as something like Skyrim. A good rule of thumb is to make your design for a one month game and then cut it in half. Believe me, everyone falls for the trap of overscoping, especially for beginners. Step number four, and again this one is meant to go along with the previous step, pick up a copy of Clean Code and research Clean Code principles. This step alone will improve your skills as a programmer tenfold. Writing clean code helps your code be more organized, more performant, and easier to adapt and reuse. 
If you've been following this channel for a while, then you've certainly heard me talk about it quite a lot. I mention it a lot because it is really that important. If you write sloppy code, it may work at first, but as your projects get more and more complex, it will become more and more of a mess. For example, my latest game, Battleground Tycoon, is in total 90,000 lines of code long. There's no way I could have built that game without constantly thinking how to structure everything. So pick up the book, read it, apply it, watch a bunch of videos on YouTube, and always keep clean code concepts in the back of your mind. Step number five, and this is where things get really interesting, make a three month game and publish it to Steam or the App Store. This should be a proper, albeit a tiny game. By now you should be better at analyzing the scope of a certain game idea, but again, come up with your scope and cut it in half. Three months is enough time to make something small and really nice, but not enough to do something huge. Focus on making a tight, well-designed core experience instead of a dozen systems that don't really work well together. Your design should be unique, but not too unique. It should stand out whilst also being familiar. Also take this time to analyze your own strengths and weaknesses. So if your strength is art, then maybe do something like a gorgeous puzzle platformer or a narrative focused game. On the other hand, if your strength is programming, then go for a more systems based game like a mini tycoon or a strategy game. A large part of this step is submitting your game to the Steam or App Store. This should be your introduction to getting your game available for players. So go through the whole process of adding it and learning how the platform works. Once it's out, interact with players and get feedback so you can always keep improving. This is also going to be your first exposure to marketing. Read up on the basics and apply them as much as you can within the available timeframe. Also in the end, you should not worry about results. This project is still firmly in the learning category. It is meant to give you knowledge and experience and will likely not achieve financial success. I've made some videos on what to do before and after launching your game, so this is a great time to check those out and apply what you can. Step number six, read code complete. Again, follow this step alongside the previous one, or maybe finish that project and then dedicate one month entirely to studying this book and applying it to various prototypes. Once again, clean code is very important, and the more complex your project, the more important it becomes. The previous book, Clean Code, is a bit more condensed than this one, so that's why I suggested that one first. This one is the real deal. It's 900 pages long, and once you read it, you will become a better programmer than most, guaranteed. Make sure you read, study, and apply everything that you learn. This step is really important, and a must if you want to succeed in the next step as a game developer. Step number seven. Now you're ready for the big one. Make and publish a proper complete six month game. By following all the previous steps, you've made several small prototypes which helped you get comfortable with the engine and the language. You've made two complete games, so you know all the various elements that make up a complete game, like a main menu, options, music, sound effects, and making it bug free. You've uploaded the game to the Steam or the App Store, so you're familiar with that process and what those players expect from a complete game and you've studied up on clean code principles, which makes you ready to tackle a more complex, more challenging project. So the goal is a six month game. It should be larger than the previous three month game, but again, be very careful with scope size. Some people start off with a six month project and end up taking years. So be very wary to make sure that doesn't happen. And again, focus on making a tight core experience. Instead of making a 40 hour game with tons of content, focus on making a really well designed, really well polished five hour experience. Spend some time coming up with a proper design that has potential. Make some tiny prototypes if you have to and experiment with various ideas. Remember that players are very demanding, so come up with something that is simultaneously unique and familiar. You have six months, so it's fine if you take two to three weeks to come up with your base design. Your design should be written somewhere, either on physical paper or a file in your computer. Personally, I prefer to design on paper. It should contain a high level view of your game and the main pillars with more detail for the main mechanics. However, it should not be an extremely detailed 100 page document. It should be simple enough to provide you with a clear direction, but allow space for iterating as you build it. Once you have your idea set and your design stable, then get started and pay close attention to what you're making. Focus on writing clean code or you will suffer at the later stages of development. This is not a prototype, so don't write tons of hacks just to get your game working. With your design, you should know roughly what you're going to need to implement in the months ahead, so always keep that in mind. For example, if you know your design involves multiple levels, 
then make sure that when you're writing some sort of level manager class, you write it thinking about expanding it to multiple levels rather than hard coding a single test level. As your game progresses, make sure you keep testing. One very important concept you should have learned by researching clean code is the concept of technical debt. As you play your game and find bugs, depending on the severity, make sure you deal with them rather than letting them go forward and telling yourself you'll fix it later. Keep everything as stable as possible as you add more mechanics and try to make sure that your game is always playable. One of the main goals of this step is to actually publish your game. In the end, it should be available for purchase on Steam. So you should work on pre-launch marketing and try your best to find success. Make your coming soon page as soon as possible and try to build up your wishlist long before release. As soon as you have some screenshots that look good enough, get them out for people to see. Study some more on general marketing to figure out how to best write your store page. So after 5 months, your game should be pretty much complete. It should be a solid experience that goes from start to finish. As you approach the end, make sure you leave some time to focus solely on polishing. Polish is what separates good games from great games. So instead of adding more mechanics, make sure you polish what you already have. Watch some videos on Game Juice to get an idea of the tiny details that can really enhance your game. By now you should hopefully have several thousand wishlists gathered over several months. Again, go check out the videos I made on what to do before and after release to ensure your game has the best chances for success. And as the release date comes, then congratulations your game is now live. You have successfully built a game and published it for the world to play. That is more than most people that do get started on this journey. So be proud of yourself, but at the same time, this is no time to celebrate. Once the game is out, it's critical to make sure everything is working correctly. You don't want to go celebrate and then wake up 12 hours later with a dozen negative reviews due to technical issues. Watch the Steam forums and reviews as closely as possible. Reply and be active interacting with the community, answering questions and responding to bug reports. Also make sure you do some more marketing. So send keys to curators, websites and YouTubers. If you gather the newsletter of people who follow you, make sure you notify them. Your biggest fans will help you stand out from the other hundreds of games. So by now you have your longest, most complex and most compelling game out there for the world to play. Awesome! Once again, don't obsess over the results. Hopefully you will find some success, either in terms of copy sold or good player feedback. However, this is your very first proper game and not your ultimate masterpiece, so do keep that in mind. You're only now just starting your very long and fruitful game development journey, so analyze the game, read the reviews, and learn what went right and what went wrong, so your next one is even better. If you followed all the steps, then congratulations! After following them, it will be around a year from now, and you will indeed have become a game developer. However, don't stop there. Game development and programming are constant, never-ending journeys. There's always more games to make, more designs to create, more code to write, and more things to learn. So keep at it, keep learning, and keep creating. I have a playlist with more general advice based on my experience as a solo indie game developer, so check those videos out to learn more about this very interesting career. I wish you all the best in your game development journey. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Hit the like button if you liked the video, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you next time.